What's up, everybody? It's Kami, and whoa, that was really loud. Um, I don't know. I'm not sick anymore, so I am guess I'm just, like, really excited to actually sit down and record a stand swap. I haven't done a stand swap in weeks, so I apologize for that. I have been having other JoJo videos and stuff like that. We've done Diamond Records. We've done the explain the explanation videos, the explain stuff, uh, like we normally do. But I haven't done a stand swap where I just sit down, you know, just play as I have and just talk about JoJo shit in a while. So this one is from Johanna Samaniego. I hope I pronounced that right. I think I got that right. Johanna Samaniego. That's a Spanish name. Uh, but this person said, Bad Company and Aerosmith. And I saw this and I was like, you know, uh, Keicho's not in Eyes of Heaven, but it's stand swap and one of the characters is so I can just talk about the characters and stuff and their stands because regardless of the characters being in Eyes of Heaven or not, I'm still just going to sit down and talk about them live and just give, you know, a couple thoughts and things like that on how the stands would pretty much just affect the other parts and the other characters differently. So, uh, if you guys do enjoy this type of stuff and this is your first time seeing one then leave a like and subscribe of course always gonna have jojo content i haven't had a couple videos go up uh this week i've only really had this one and the one that went up yesterday which some of you guys didn't seem to like uh i just wanted to let you guys know that i was still sick and suffering playing that winnie the pooh shit so there's that but anyways aerosmith and bad company so aerosmith itself is just fairly simple it's literally just this little toy looking airplane that shoots things and that's pretty much just it it's got bombs and shit uh, and it can shoot people and it can track people down with this tiny little sonar thing that it has. So, overall the stand itself is very simple. But it's actually really deadly and uh, being just such a high range stand, it kind of gives pretty much, well not even kind of, it gives Narancia a huge advantage over his opponents in part 5. So he's able to kind of just scope out the area uh, and he has this high destructive power being able to shoot down, you know, mini napalms I guess you could call it. Uh, that's what they look like, but it's like, you know, just these little fire bombs and stuff. And this little tiny ass toy airplane looking thing, it's a pretty big deal, you know? It's not something that you would expect this little ass looking kid to have, I guess, because Narancia does look pretty small, but he's like 17 years old, so he's not too small. But he has this kiddish little stand, and you wouldn't think that it would be anything like super crazy or super strong, but Aerosmith is, you know, pretty damn underrated actually just when it comes to being deadly, because again, it's small, it's just quick, it's got bullets and shit, and against any other normal person, because stand users are normal people, unless we put them against somebody like... I don't know, Dio or like uh, cars or somebody, or like a vampire or a pillar man, then just shooting people won't simply be the most efficient way. I mean, Dio took a bunch of bullets in part one in the very beginning of Phantom Blood uh, when Speedwagon tried shooting him and all the cops started shooting him and, you know, it didn't do anything to him, but I guess any other normal stand user, these bullets would just, you know, light them up and turn them into cheese, essentially, and they would just die. And for some reason, I almost thought this was Dragon Ball Universe, and I tried to do a a grab in there like real weird and stuff but yeah so Aerosmith would just demolish any other normal human being anybody that's just not you know some crazy vampire with immortality and stuff would just get devastated just fighting this stand uh, by themselves unless they have a perfect counterpart with it and that's kind of just one of the main reasons uh, why Diablo was I guess afraid of Narantia because they technically Narantia could have killed uh, Diablo he could have gotten rid of him and he could have you know eliminated King Crimson but Narantia did end up dying and it was important that Narancia ended up dying because he would have just destroyed the shit out of Diablo. And I'm saying it's just important for, like, Diablo as a villain, you know. He didn't want to just get fodderized like that and be done in by some little toy airplane that you wouldn't think was, you know, super deadly. But he's got bombs and shit. Like, literal, nap like, napalms. He's shooting these flaming fucking explosions, you know, bombs. And bombs cause explosions and shit. And then he shoots things, so it's like, he's got bullets. And he's got bombs. I mean, what else do you want the guy to do? You know, he's already got two super deadly powers right there. And damn it, that would have been really cool to hit, but we missed it. But he's got two super deadly powers just right there with itself. It's just fucking bombs and shooting shit. And bombs and shooting shit is OP, in case you guys didn't know. And I've been emphasizing that a lot because uh, I've seen a lot of people that are like, oh, Aerosmith is stupid. It's just this little uh, toy airplane, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't do much. But you gotta come into the fact that he's got crazy range. He can pretty much just scope out the area. Uh, within a large radius and just get good range on everything and get good insight on the situation and who's around and who isn't around and then on top of that he's just got pure destructive power of just being able to just destroy and kill things really uh, and it's pretty damn violent honestly and Narancia himself is a little violent when he goes into using uh, Aerosmith and he goes like ham and stuff and there's the one scene uh, <laughs> after the betrayal of Diablo where they go into the diner and he kicks the shit out of this guy because he thinks, oh, he's a stand user. And then he ends up not being the stand user. So it's like, well, we just beat this guy to a bloody pulp. Like, oh, well. And it's kind of just that. And they couldn't really do anything about it. So I thought that was always funny. 
Uh, even though it's, you know, messed up. <laughs> you just beat the shit out of some random guy, but he couldn't do anything about it. And then Bad Company. Bad Company is another one of those little toy-looking stands that you would think of. Uh, and pretty much anybody growing up, like, you know, just like guys and shit. Uh, at least in my case, I had a ton of army men, alright? Like those little, uh, green just army men toys you would get at, like, the dollar store and shit like that. You know, they were just little soldiers and stuff. And you could get, like, uh, they had a bunch of different stuff. They had, like, tanks and... You could get a bunch of shit with these little army guys, and they were always really cool. I always liked playing with the uh, army men toys. But, you know, a lot of people growing up probably played with army men toys, and if you didn't, well... I'm sorry, you missed out on one of the best things ever. Because uh, army men toys are just great, dude. It's literally just like, you just have your imagination, and boom. There you go. And you would just go to town playing with these little army guys. But he's got a bunch of army men, he's got tanks, he's got helicopters, and what they do is they shoot things, and they kill. So... It's literally just normal army men, but like mini sized toys essentially is just bad company. So if we were to take bad company and Aerosmith and switch them out, uh, first off in the beginning fight against, I guess just Josuke, before Keicho gets uh, gut punched by Red Hot Chili Peppers and stuff, uh, in this fight, he does corner Josuke and he does do substantial damage to him and he does, you know, end up hurting him and actually affecting him. but. If he had this range advantage of having Aerosmith, probably even before he got into the house, he would have been shooting him and throwing, like, explosions and shit at Josuke from up top of the second floor of the house for the Nijimura brothers. So, he would have just destroyed the shit out of Josuke, and Josuke wouldn't really stand a chance, honestly. Uh, he would have just gotten bodied, you know? And that would have been that. And as for Narancia having bad company uh, instead of Aerosmith, okay. So, in his fight with Little Feet, uh, since he would have to kind of just stab him, I'm wondering if, if he stabs all of the army men, if that would affect Narantia and make Narantia super small. Uh, I'd say yes, and take the safe assumption, since, you know, hitting a stand does affect the user, so... It would be a bit more of, I guess, a hitbox, in a way, for Narantia to get affected by Little Feet. But then Naranti would also have way more attacks coming in, he'd have the helicopters and tanks just shooting bullets you know, normal bullets to a normal person, right? Just some normal Italian guy. And, like, we have guys like Mista and stuff who does, his stand doesn't even, like, you know, his stand is not the bullets. The Sex Pistols is not the bullets. Sex Pistols are the little yellow guys that kick the bullets around. But we see that guns are just, you know, super deadly to normal humans like they should be. And a lot of people in Part 5 just will pull out a gun and boom, shoot you in the head. Like, Mista's, you know, the perfect example. He's the one in the group that's just got the gun and he'll just go pow and shoot you in the face. And, you know, if you give Narancia bad company, he would have literally just been shooting everybody. And given he wouldn't have sonar and he would have been able to try and track down uh, Diavolo when Abaccio dies and all that stuff that happens right there on the coastline. He wouldn't have been able to do that, yes. But when it comes down to him being in his fights, he would have definitely finished them way quicker than with Aerosmith. And you're probably wondering, oh, well, you know, since he has bombs, he can just drop bombs and kill everything, right? Yes. But setting down a bomb and shooting one target are two different things. Because setting down a bomb, right, a bomb still has a bigger radius. A bomb has a bigger explosion uh, range. So that could affect his friends more. Whereas having bad company, yes, it could technically still get his friends in the way. But it's not as big of a fire shot spread, I guess, as a bomb. It's more something that he can just target onto one person and just, you know, ruthlessly shoot the shit out of that person until they literally look like Swiss cheese and they're dead. So that's what I think would happen uh, if the two of them were to fight or something like that. Uh, and who knows how that would go. Honestly, Narancia is not the brightest kid, uh, but Keicho also kind of just, you know, got bitched out. So I'm not really sure how a fight between the two of them would go, but they're both really strong stands that I think a lot of people overlook just because of the fact of how simple and basic they are. And I guess in a way cartoonish and toyish since, you know, one of them is a toy airplane essentially. And the other one is fucking army men from the dollar store. So like I said before, leave a like if you guys enjoyed this episode of Stand Swap. I'm going to be pumping out more Stand Swap videos because I haven't been doing them as much as I've been wanting to. Uh, you know, subscribe. Leave any Stand Swap suggestions down below in the comments and any other JoJo video topic ideas that you guys want to hear me talk about down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.